So the next point is adaptation. Okay, adaptation is the process of adjusting the characteristics of a system to reach a satisfactory level of goal achievement that is benefits to the environment and resources received from the environment which depends on goal achievement which uh, in other words you can put it as benefits to the system now as the definition indicates the relationship between goal achievement and getting resources is central to successful adaptation so the kinds of systems that planners deal with are open systems open systems take resources from the environment and return something of value to the extent that the output of the system is valued or effective the system will continue to get resources and will survive and achieve goals it will have adapted successfully now we can see how this operates more clearly in a commercial firm which makes and sells a product if the product is needed or wanted sales are high and the income needed to continue purchasing raw materials to make into product continues correct so in public agencies of the type where most communication planners work there is no profit or loss but the system works in the same way agencies which produce good work continue to get budgets the process of giving value to the output of the agency is much more complicated however okay so in an idealized world this would be done with cost benefit analysis and evaluation does pay a part in determining the resources that agencies get okay so however as is well known many other factors often called political enter into the process of deciding what is good work and therefore what resources go to a public agency okay so in planning your vacation you adjusted several characteristics of your vacation system to maximize your goal and hence the benefits to your system in order to get the most relaxation you went to the seashore adjusting the location characteristic of your system understood now our health campaign planners adjusted the combination of messages and media they used to achieve maximum benefits in terms of health practice for villagers okay so they did this adjusting to key factors in the environment okay these included the availability of information about the audience including very inf uh, important information about what the villagers want okay the resources such as communication channels that were available to them okay and the planners views on whether changed health behaviors should be voluntarily or required by law okay views which come from their social image okay so we know of course that the environment changes often quite rapidly correct so sometimes this is the result of the efforts of our planned system if goals are being achieved elements of the planned system will change such as village health practices these changes will in turn lead to other changes in the environment because of the interdependency of systems so improved health for example may lead to increased rates of population growth and more pressure on food supply other changes occur independently of the efforts of the planned system sometimes these are the results of planned effort on the part of other systems sometimes they cannot be anticipated this in fact seems to be most usual thus the relationship through which a system adapts to its environment must constantly be evaluated and often changed as the environment and the system both change the existing adaptation relationship must change as well in fact an important aspect of effective planning 
is anticipation of changes and the establishment of goals which will have value in a future changed environment. It is in this way that planning is fundamentally oriented to the future. Now this is a bit abstract but an example could help you in understanding what I'm trying to say. Okay, in choosing a goal of improved health practices for villages, our campaign planners have already rejected past goals relating to curing diseases. Correct? They believe, for any number of reasons, that preventive health care is and will be more important and valuable. They project this goal in an environment where better preventive health practice is needed and will make a difference in terms of the higher goals of the larger system environment in which they operate, that is, the National Health Program. Correct? So, they have adjusted their goal to important values or goals in the environment of their system. If they are successful in establishing new health practices, they will have changed part of the environment to which they must adapt in the future, village conditions. Okay, so this will require them to establish new goals, thus adjusting a key characteristic of their system once again. The classic example of this was in the United States, when a large and extremely successful national volunteer agency had to change its goals from eliminating polio to working against cancer okay the invention of the sock vaccine okay which the agency helped support led to success against polio the original system goal was no longer viable to survive the system had to adapt to a new goal okay now moving on to the next part is conscious effort okay conscious effort to adapt the system is what planners do okay we commonly think of this as the planning process planners are those persons within a system charged with adapting the system to its environment very often they are called planners and they think of themselves that way particularly in more complex systems at other times, planning is one of several activities of people in systems as with our vacation planner or the village health worker. Okay? The planning process involves the use of rational thought and the application of knowledge to achieving system creation and or adaptation in the future. Okay? This is what distinguishes planning from other forms of human act action such as intuitive reaction to immediate problems. Now, there are many ways in which to define rational thought. Okay? The five elements listed here are common, okay? but they also appear in slightly different forms in other writings about planning. Okay? So, the five elements are analysis, strategy, decision, action and learning. Okay, so for convenience, we are going to call analysis, strategy, decision, action and learning as ASDAL. Okay, so ASDAL is what we'll use from now. Okay, for the five elements. All right, each of these elements represents a phase or a stage in the process of rational thought and hence appears in one form or another in all approaches to planning. Now listing these five elements one after the another does not mean that the overall planning process is necessarily a step-by-step -step linear process. Okay, Except at basic levels for simple systems, the process is almost always circular and iterative Okay, and sometimes simultaneous occurring over and over again okay in the real world planning begins at different points in the rational process goes forward goes back and skips steps okay often planners work on different elements simultaneously such as when they plan goals and evaluation together nevertheless these elements are present 
in one form or another in all planning processes. Depending on the systems, the environment and other factors, planning will be planning in different ways and the emphasis on the various elements of the ASDAL process will differ as well. Okay, so we will try and discuss this in somewhat more detail in the future chapters.